Hey guys, it's Gur next, and I am in a in a new place for the third time, and it's almost the second year in England, where I finally can feel like I'm doing great on my own. I'm not distracted by neighbors or something like that. Yeah, people are basically the biggest distraction, but anyways. What I'm going to be doing is going to be trying to recreate one of the best experiences in gaming that I had. Or the most memorable, because it's the most um, distant as well. And one of the first big things that I played. It's called Dungeon Siege to Lens of, to Lens of Hyperbrea. It's a mod of Dungeon, Dungeon Siege. It's basically a complete rework, a, uh, a new story told through the engine, which kind of gives you the idea of adventure craft, which is also something that tried to give tools to people to tell their own stories. And it's basically the core of any engine. Um, what I found also the, to be the core of the game in general is character development and spawned it seems like it turned into an idea where I take Minecraft and I spawn something which you can play with which you can interact you have a battleground of Minecraft where you can mine stuff but I would add RPG elements where you could choose are you gonna be doing a lot of mining, a lot of wood, wood cutting? How are you gonna get those resources? How are you gonna get progress from one map to another? That was basically the idea of Spawn the Creeper's Forge, and how character development was so important to in that part. The thing is, so I'm gonna want to recreate this game which is also an RPG. That's why it's it was big. It had a pretty long story as well. And a lot of choices. A lot of choices which would always let me dive into the harder difficulty and get a little bit more challenges of how am I going to spend my time, how am I going to grind through through the game. I would eventually get stuck in this location with the locked door. It took me to read a manual to actually figure out that you can actually unlock the door. Obviously, uh, the first thing I thought to find is a key, but well, you have to have lock picking skill. But besides that, every single game. And this is the important bit. Every single game is uh, built around character development. You are playing some kind of character. You get, you have a story uh, line, and you're gonna go through it. There are two ways to play. You can create your own character, or you can have a an already set up story for yourself. Um, so basically, you either are playing the story, or you creating the story by creating a character, or you can have both. But it wouldn't be really, you know, a direct experience. You would be bending the story. You're trying to create your own story, um, or you can also create your own entirely story, like your own map. And this all has to be in some kind of game engine form, obviously. Again, that's what spawned, and the idea of spawned kind of uh, comes from. Even though the word itself is kind of weird, weird coincidences I always bump into. But again, appearing in the game, that actually matters. What kind of choices you make, what kind of preparations you make before you start a game is the character development and I call this 
a charred game. Every, every single game, basically, every single good game is a charred game. You play it for a long time because you want to experience different things. Um, it's an open world like Minecraft. You try different things. If you try to achieve something in different ways. What Minecraft defined character with is tools. Uh, it's just items, right? Uh, not much of an ability-based system. It's just what you can get, what kind of knowledge you have about Minecraft itself. Also, is very important for a skill set. That's why it kind of became popular in terms of sharing uh, what is new about Minecraft. As, as Minecraft is growing, there was always interest in looking for new updates and also just generally what people uh, figure out about the game but yeah that's that is the space basically if you can provide people the space to have unique experience that is pretty important we're all going to be doing i'm going to be going to a match three format in a very very complicated manner to make sure the battlefield is kind of where you have two opposing sides and the battlefield switch is and is very flexible and is separated into two parts but you can push back towards your opponent and it would change the way you play because you have more space for yourself and there's a lot of technical stuff that I could talk about but I shouldn't because it's better to show it of course the next video I'm going to make is going to be how my engine can handle these shapes, how they're going to look like. Right now I'm just, I just created a color map. I'm going to be uh, selecting colors from this thing. It's all made of, out of voxels. It's a little bit laggy, which is frustrating, especially laggy when... Um, when I'm recording, of course, but this is what it does. And it's only lag, of course, when I'm modifying so many voxels at once, when I'm shifting the saturation here. I have to change all the voxels. I kind of just tweak their colors directly. Uh, but it's, it's kind of optimized. I just took a mesh generator from Pick a Voxel, uh, which is a gen um, I'll show you oh wait that's a habit getting into YouTube is a habit now uh, just watch a lot of stuff and it's it's cool it's it's a great platform but I wanted something more Definitely. Just to create a, a thing where you can just create a story and you can have stuff like YouTube where you can do a detour and watch a video about the game trying to explain itself in some way. It's very cool. And the thing about Dungeon Siege, I couldn't complete it, but there's this unique perspective that I could share with people of how I play the game of what kind of experience that I have created for myself. And this game is a little bit different than just a typical adventure craft map. Just like what Spawn was trying to be, is trying to be more than just a typical adventure map. A typical story where you cannot select the character, but rather someone was telling you uh, what to do, where to go, you know. It's a little bit more controlled. It's not a space environment where you can do a lot of stuff and that was my goal and it's really hard to realize what your goal is you just kind of feel that you're going the right direction you're trying to beat minecraft or something and so pick a voxel um, looks uh, like this just a bunch of voxels, and it's great. 
I would love a bit a little bit more flexible system that's what I've been researching for for a long time trying to do some crazy stuff but I did fail and I fall into this engine and this is where I'm gonna stick so I finally made my choice all I have to do is motivate myself and I'm gonna talk about that as well what is the motivation part about everything but mostly the motivation has one problem so I guess it's kind of kind of clear it's just gonna be a it, it just has to be opposing sides you have a, uh, a certain goal and every single time every single encounter is a very small goal a very small step where you have to manage your resources and figure out about how much you will need to spend time uh, just in the first level let's say dungeon siege because I'm gonna be trying to recreate the story not necessarily give much space to the player and it's kind of has to be the combination but uh, yeah again there are different games that try to give you different things either specific uh, roads or not specific so was Dungeon Siege a very specific experience and a non-specific open space is what little children have to go through uh, when you get a very specific interactions when you getting very specific information it's like watching a movie basically and so that's the difference between movies and games when you have very specific stories you cannot really change much but you learning from them and you know you have different choices perhaps but they're very uh, minimized in order to for you to get the experience uh, s that's why it's it's a little bit frustrating in some games because they don't really understand themselves basically uh, it's it's almost like it's it's time to change things it's time to make games great again because games would not understand who they are uh, like would we would define RPG as a genre where we we have hell bars and progression and w what what is RPG in the first place? So I'm proposing a charred game, which is based on characters where every single game is basically doing the same thing, right? So non-specific space environment. This is where you have to start with when making an engine. This is why Minecraft actually worked it has space and you can do whatever you want you can tell your own story and you can share it if there are platforms ready for it and that's what happened that's how you can beat minecraft if you figure this out and now i finally did that's crazy <sighs> and i'm finally free as well so i'm just ready I just wasn't like mentally prepared that's why I'm making this video just to mentally prepare what am I doing right now right how much do I have to focus on this and un unraveling these mysteries of oh this is the difference between movie like as of making this video I am generating new thoughts myself so that's what's so important um, the last part of the gameplay is gonna be your ability to build a deck just like Hearthstone is it's very cool how you can just build a deck out of different parts different tools you have different tools you can have different hero powers as your own character and you can have different assistants I suppose and then you put these creatures on a battlefield like this and it would probably be very interesting I just no, there has to be a lot of choice involved, not like in Hearthstone, where you just have uh, creature interactions, but you can have a whole battlefield and a whole different range of abilities that you can have as a hero, 
and then you can have characters do small things and push forward against the opposing side. Uh, we'll see how that goes. That's basically the basics, right? You just have uh, encounters and you're trying to defeat them. The basics of every game. So this is what I have to go for. Try to pinpoint the basics. It's a lot. It's a lot of knowledge, right? So the motivation is that I'm completely like detached from everything. I'm not being told what to do, right? I'm not developing some big thing, and I'm not socially pressured in this, in just saying and bragging about whatever I'm doing, right? Generally, people would be like, "Oh yeah." I played better games than that or something. I have seen better graphics. Or I've seen better things. It, whatever, right? That's where the disappointment would come, would come. But sometimes when people are too encouraging, it's also the same problem. It's just generally you shouldn't be motivated by anything that doesn't come through reason. Right, do this because it's great or don't do this because it's bad. But why? You don't get the why part, and then you're told what to do, and you just give up to social pressure, which is basically dominant force right now, and is something that you have to take into account as a game developer if you want to be independent. And that's that's the cool part. This is what independent means, and it's supposed to mean, and it has been like a little bit twisted. People didn't really understand. The concept of what indie game is, but they got addicted to it because indie games have been pushing some great concepts, uh, great stories, and it everything that has been missing was this engine, right? A place where things work, where you can put things together, and I made some choices, and this is where I'm ending up. Uh, one more thing, I'm gonna leave you. This this part, this health bar is created out of two structures, right? So you have the base, you have the fill. So these are called voxel objects, basically. They're different voxel meshes. Well, basically, if you know what mesh is, these are meshes, basically, and. They're simply made out of voxels and super flexible, super easy to make stuff like this. It didn't took a lot of time. And yeah, I can just split them up and look from different angles and it's 3D and everything. So I can't wait to show you how it's gonna look, how these gems are gonna look like in a 3D format. Um, why not just make it out of sprites? Certainly, I have been working with uh, Game Maker, and I've been doing the sprite-based stuff. But I certainly found like some great things about Minecraft and this 3D feeling. Even though you're just gonna be looking from top down, it's so important. Uh, we're gonna explore why. In the future, I currently don't know myself fully. Why 3D is so important? I kind of forgot that aspect, but yeah, there's so much more exploration going on, and you can just zoom into something, and I just feel like a flat surface is just such a big difference, really. Ugh, yeah, yeah, I can't. I can't really tell you what the disappointment about sprites is, but there is such thing. This was one of the first three D games in general, so that's a thing. It's almost like I'm, I'm redoing the the history again. Anyways, see you guys next time. Thanks, thanks for watching. We'll see what the future holds.